Hello all, welcome back to Bookish Ramblings. In today's episode, I am going to be telling you my favorite books of all time. I have been on YouTube since probably almost two years, and I've never done this video. And I guess I just really never thought of it because I feel like I talk about my favorite books like in every other video that I do. So I just, it, I never really thought about it because I feel like you've all heard about what my favorite books are. But I guess it is a good idea to put all of my favorite books in one specific video. Thank you, Oshina, for pointing out that I haven't done this yet and that maybe I should. I didn't have much creamer left, so this is all the coffee that I can make. And it's really weak because I made it wrong. I used a different coffee maker this time that I'm not used to using and I got like the water to coffee ratio kind of off. It's really weak, but I can't do anything about it because I don't have any creamer. So I started out trying to like compile a list of all of my like favorite books of all time and kind of narrow it down. I was really struggling trying to decide which books really belong in this video. Decided to just stop overthinking it and just make the video. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so the first series that I want to talk about that is one of my all-time favorites is the Kids Left Behind series by Jerry Jenkins and Tim LaHaye. You may have heard of the adult original Left Behind series. It was very, very popular back in the day when it came out, like, when I was, before I was born. And I read that series and I did enjoy it, but I've always just really liked the Kids Left Behind series better. I think because at the time when I first read this, when I was, like, 12, the kids were, like, around my age, so I could, like, kind of... I could just get into the story more and even to this day it's still my favorite. I still enjoy it more than the adult series. I can't really pick out my favorite book in the series. I can't even separate the events from each book enough to do that. But this is just a random one just so I can show you. But it starts off with four teenagers who get left behind in the rapture when all the born again Christians are raptured and taken to heaven. And then the seven year tribulation starts and then it takes you all the way through that to the end when Jesus comes back on the white horse and destroys all of his enemies and sets up the millennium and yeah, all that stuff. The four teenagers get left behind and it just takes you through the tribulation and all the stuff that the Bible says are going to happen during that time and the Antichrist and all the, the plagues and the earthquakes and all of the crazy stuff that goes on and the Christians being martyred and all of that stuff. This is like the only series that I've ever discovered that actually takes you through the entire tribulation all seven years. Like, I don't think I've ever discovered another, like, Christian fiction series that took you all the way through. I mean, disclaimer, I don't think every single event that is in this book is exactly how maybe it's going to happen in real life when that event does take place. But, like, it's a book, and it's fiction, and it's fun to read, and, you know, like, it doesn't have to be, like, exactly. This series is a little dated. It was written a really long time ago. So, you know, I would really love to have, like, kind of an updated version of this. But it's still really good, and I think it's just kind of, I don't know, it just will always have a special place in my heart. Because it's one of, like, the first Christian series that I, like, discovered and really got into. So, it's special to me. And I really like it. So, yeah. The next series is The Ravenwood Saga by Morgan L. Busey. This is a series I just discovered last year, and I've only read the first two books, but it's still my favorite series, one of my favorite series of all time. So Lady Celine of House Ravenwood finally gets her gift of dreamwalking, which allows her to enter another person's dreams, their dreamscape, and from there she can manipulate the dreams, she can kind of like discover the person's innermost thoughts and secrets and fears, so that's really fun. All these different houses, like in this like nation or land or whatever, they all have like different gifts. Her family's, the Ravenwood gift is dreamwalking, and then there's like all of these other gifts, like the gift of like you can control water or like light or earth or like all of these things. For like generations or whatever, the Ravenwood women have been using their gifts to be like assassins for hire and for like all of these like really evil purposes and stuff. House Ravenwood are followers of the Dark Lady, which is like who they pray to and worship and all of this stuff. She's like the patroness of their house. And there was a prophecy that this man from House Maris would bring the downfall of House Ravenwood. So Celine's mother tasks Celine with assassinating this guy. So Celine really struggles with the right and wrong of the whole thing and what she should do because she believes that it's wrong, but she also wants to protect her family and her house and she feels like this is what she has to do to do that. So Celine struggles and she has to make a choice. 
if she's going to save this person or kill this person and save her house. There's more to it, but like I'm doing my best with these summaries, okay? And I really, really love this series. It's just really fun. I love fantasy and I just really love stuff like this. So, so the next series that I'm going to talk about is the Out of Time series by Nadine Brandes. So in this world, way in the future, everyone has a clock that is like matched to them like before they're even born and it tells them when they're going to die. Parvin and her twin brother were born with only one clock between them so no one knows whose clock it is but they've been sharing it all this time secretly because people that don't have a clock are labeled radicals and they're thrown on the other side of the wall which is like their people's death sentence so they've been illegally sharing the clock all of this time. Well their clock says they only have one year left. When it's discovered that one of them is a radical, Parvin claims that it's her brother's clock, not hers, that she's the radical, and she is thrown on the other side of the wall with only a few months left to live. So while on the other side of the wall, she has to learn to survive because there's a lot of crazy stuff on the other side and she's always in these dangerous situations and she's always like almost dying and stuff, but she's strong and she is smart and she survives. And she learns a lot about the rest of the world that she never knew about. And she just learns a lot about God and learning how to trust him and learning more about him and who he is. And it becomes her life's mission to get the wall torn down and to destroy all of the clocks because they're just a way for the people in power to control everyone else. She wants to save her people and bring shalom to the world. And I just think it's a really fun series. It's a dystopian, as you can tell. I really love this series a lot. I think it's just really interesting and really good. Next is an author and a series that I don't talk about very much, but it is one of my very, very favorites. It's pretty different from all the other books that I've been talking about. And that's the Love Comes Softly series by Jeanette Oak. Some people might think they're boring, but I really like the slower pace and just kind of just the... I don't know they're just they're nice and just kind of a nice change from like some of the more like exciting and like crazy books that I read. They're romance and I just I really like them a lot. It's always really sweet romances really clean which I appreciate and just sweet old-fashioned romance and I just love that so much. So I really really love the first book of course. I like the whole series but there are a few that are actually like my favorites that I've reread a few times. So I completely forgot to give you a summary of this book per usual of Celestria. So Marty and her husband have headed out into the unknown west to start a life together and there's a tragic accident and her husband dies and so she's left all alone, pregnant, nowhere to go, no home, no way to, no money to get back home. And so Clark, who is a widower, comes to her with a proposition. He has a young daughter and he's like, you know, marry me and you I'll take care of you, you can live in my house and just be a mama for my little girl. And that is really her only choice, so she agrees and they get married and she is new to all of this. She's never been a mother, she's never really had to keep house or anything, so she's learning how to do things for the first time. And she's just wanting to be there long enough until she can earn some money to go back home. But they end up falling in love, of course. And it's just a really, really sweet romance and a really sweet story. And then my other favorites, they have like a ton of kids. One of their kids, Belinda, her stories are my favorite. She has like three books in the series, books six, seven, and eight. And I love reading her story and her and Drew and I just love it so much. And yeah, so these are my favorite. These four are my favorites in the series, but the whole series is really, really good. And yeah. My next favorite series is Wars of the Rome by Chuck Black. He is one of my favorite authors and I really like all of his books. But The Wars of the Realm is one of my top favorites of all of his series. So this is about a guy, Drew, who is temporarily blinded in a like lab experiment gone wrong. When he finally gets his sight back, he realizes that he can now see things that he couldn't before. And he sees these beings, these invaders. He sees them all over the place influencing people and affecting the people and the world around him. But nobody else can see it. He's not sure what they are. He thinks they might be aliens, maybe um, intent on taking over the world. He doesn't really know. But what he's actually seeing is he's seeing into another dimension, the spiritual realm, and he's seeing angels and demons. Then he has to end up like going on the run from the cops because he's accused of something that he didn't do. And 
So then he's hiding from the cops and trying to hide from the evil invaders and just all this stuff. The second book is more the perspective of the angels and demons and kind of that spirit realm and more of like everything from their pers perspective and what's going on. So that was interesting. And then the third book has terrorist threats and secret agents and like really cool stuff like that. So I really, really love this series and I find spiritual warfare just really fascinating and fun to read about. So yeah, highly recommend this series. It's really, really good. My next favorite series is by the same author and it's the Knights of Arethrae series. This is just a random book from the series. There's six books total. This is a uh, medieval fantasy, which is one of my favorite genres of all time. I love medieval books and medieval fantasy is even better. So in these books, there is a king who is supposed to be like symbolic of God and he lives in a kingdom across the sea. In the kingdom series, which is, this is a spinoff series of the kingdom series. The king sends his son, the prince, to tell everyone about him in the kingdom across the sea and give them the good news and everything he's symbolic of Jesus the knights are like their followers like Christians and then there's uh, the dark knight which is like Lucifer Satan and then the shadow warriors which are the evil knights obviously and the silent warriors which are like the angels so all of the different books in this series there's like the knights of the prince it's a different story in each one and them battling the dark knights trying to save the kingdom and recruit as many followers for the prince as they can, good fighting evil, and all that good stuff. Okay, so the Knights from Earth series is a set of allegorical stories based on biblical principles. Each book attempts to teach about virtues and vices conveyed through the truth of God's word. This book teaches about the virtues of courage and mercy and warns against the vices of greed and fear. This one warns against uh, apathy. I really can't pick a favorite in the series. Every time I think I have a favorite and I try, I realize that all of them are my favorite. I love them all and I really can't separate them. The next series is one that I have raved about a whole ton and it's so good. This might, might be my number one favorite series of all time ever. Might. I kind of hate to say that because I love all of these other series so much, but this series is like the epitome of everything that I love. Like, it's, it's perfect. I really feel like this series really couldn't be any better. I love it so much. I love everything about it. It has great, amazing characters that I love. It's like a medieval-ish fantasy, but like not the magical kind. I love the magical kind, but this is like the non-magical kind, which I kind of more realistic, and I just really, really like that. Everything about it is just so good, and I really, really like it. It is a quality series you guys, and you need to read it. So there's a lot of different points of view in this first book, but I guess the main two characters are Chiron and Jace. Chiron has been taken and put in this special school when she was little along with her brother and trained to serve the emperor. She is very good with like, she has very good like observational skills and a really great memory. Like she just remembers everything. Like she has one of those photographic memories. Her skills are recognized and she's taken into the palace to serve the emperor and work for him. And this becomes a very scary thing and very much a problem because the emperor has declared that it is illegal to serve any other gods except for the sun and moon gods. And Chiron is a firm believer in Elon, I think is how you say it, which is like, you know, the Christian god. So she has to keep this hidden because if they found out, she could be put to death. She ends up becoming a part of this like resistance group who um, is a group that, you know, serves Elon and they have to like go into hiding so that, you know, they're not like captured by the emperor's men and like put to death and everything. And then Jace is this guy with a tortured past. He is a tortured soul. He had a horrible horrible childhood and upbringing he was like a gladiator and like fought in the arena and stuff he ends up joining the resistance and everything yeah it's just as you go through all the different books there's all these different situations but yeah it's like about the resistance and all the stuff that goes on with them and everything so like i don't even there's so much stuff i don't even know how to explain it but yeah i i guess that's that's as good as i can do but it is such a good series and i love it so much. Alright, so the last three series are all by the same author. I love all the books in all three of these series, 
but I was able to pick out like my favorites from each series to show you. So the first one is the Hoggenheim series by Melanie Dickerson. I have talked about Melanie Dickerson and the Hoggenheim series a lot. And these are my three favorite books from the Hoggenheim series. The Golden Braid, The Princess Spy, and The Merchant's Daughter. They're all so good. They're fairy tale retellings all set in, well most of them are set in medieval Germany. Some of them are set in medieval England. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, a Rapunzel retelling obviously, and a Princess and the Frog retelling. And I just love all of these so much. They're so fun and they can be super cheesy and cliche and almost cringeworthy at times because they're so cliche. But I just, I love cliche. I like it. It makes me happy. And I just, they're really easy reads and they're just really fun. And the next is the Medieval Fairy Tale series. The Huntress of Thornbeck Forest and The Beautiful Pretender are my two favorites of the trilogy. I'm not really sure which one of these is my favorite. I have to have to reread them to pick between these two. This is a Swan Princess retelling and this is a... I can't find what retelling this is. Alright, so this is a cross between The Princess and the Pea and Beauty and the Beast. This one might be supposed to be a crossover too. But I'm pretty sure it's just uh, the Swan Princess. And the covers are like gorgeous. And the last series that is my favorite that I'm going to talk about is the Regency Spies of London series. There's three books in the series and this one's my favorite of all three. The Viscount's Proposal. I love it so, so much. I just love the, the romance between these two characters. And just the love to hate relationship is great. I love it. Leora Langdon, she is kind of like, not wild, but she's just one of those girls that is always like defying convention and not the most proper or the most like perfect kind of Regency girl. She just has no patience for shallow rules and appearances. She's one of those girls, you know. Lord Withinghall, he is kind of this Seemingly kind of like stuffy kind of guy who is all about the rules and appearances. Him and Leora clash from the beginning, as you can imagine. He thinks she's a reckless hoyden and she's like, you're just a stuffy like person who is just like annoying and rude and I don't like you. Because of circumstances, they end up riding in a carriage together. He's giving her a ride back to her home. Their carriage gets overturned. There's a bad accident and then there's kind of like this scandal and gossip about the two of them found in the carriage together at night in the rain. He's horrified about it. And then they end up discovering anyway, at any rate, that the carriage accident was not an accident. So that's where the spying comes in. So they work together to find out who wants Lord Withinghall dead. And they also need to like save Leora's reputation. Lord Withinghall wants to be like prime minister and stuff. So they want to save like his career and bring the bad guy to justice. And they end up falling in love and it's just really good. I like it a lot. So yeah. So, that is all of the books that I wanted to tell you about today. All of my favorite books and books that I just love a whole, whole lot. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you added some new books to your TBR. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next Bookish Ramblings video. Bye!